All right, Jamie Doherty here at the Ranger booth, and I'm gonna show you the Quick Cure Clay. Um, here is the creator of the clay. Hi, I'm John Poyman. I'm a professor of chemistry at Louisiana State University and invented Quick Cure Clay and working with Ranger Industries. Yes, so I'm gonna show you just a real quick um, tutorial on how to use it. You can use it in molds. Um, any silicone mold basically will work as long as it's heat resistant. So what you're gonna do is press your clay into the mold. Now the nice part about the quick cure is it actually expands a little bit, unlike most clays where they shrink when they dry or bake. This is actually gonna be great in molds because it's gonna expand against the walls of your mold instead of shrink away and you lose some of that detail. So I'm gonna just press that nice and smooth inside our mold. And then all you need to cure this is a heat gun. Um, it will not dry out. If you leave this on your table for a week or so, you forget about it, it gets stuck under you know, those 12 by 12 pieces of paper and projects. Um, it's not going to harden until you hit it with a heat gun. Um, I could leave this jar open for, I, I have a bag at home that I, I pull from. It's been open for a couple months and it's still as pliable as it was when I received it. So that's another great um, benefit of the clay is that you're not gonna waste a lot of it like you do with other clays that if you leave the bag open, guess what, it's worthless. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and set your heat gun at the edge of the clay. Now, depending on your uh, climate, it may take you a little bit longer. If it's colder, a little more humid, it may take a little bit longer to get the process started with the heat gun. But you just set it on its side and then once the heat finally sets um, one of the corners, it's going to actually thermally bake itself. So the chemical reaction inside is going to heat it and bake itself. Now, can you bake it outside of the mold? You can, but I leave it in the mold so that it uh, keeps the integrity of the design. If you pull it out, you know, sometimes with like polymer or paper clay, you pull it out and you lose the detail. You can mess, you know, just kind of mess it up. I'm just trying to get the edge there. Once it dries, you can add any medium to it, right? Yes. So once it's dry and it cools, so as you can see, you can see the reaction of where the line is that of the piece that's baked already and cured and the side that hasn't yet. So once the small process, yeah, that's the chemical reaction. Once it's cured, you're not gonna have any of that. And I, I heard that you can add more to it. Yes. Before it dries. You can add more before to you it. it. You can add more to it before and after. So if I want to add more to it, I can build on top of it and it's going to adhere to itself. Even if it's already cured? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. So like the broken piece, I can actually mend this with more clay. So I can come in, put it together. What about gluing two pieces together? You like can in the still glue them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Very, very cool. But Great I can invention. mend it. This piece broke before, and he, it was forcibly broke <laughs> by John. But yes, yeah, it was just to test it, it whether or not. But it was a very thin piece. But you can always fix it and mend it as well. So I'm gonna leave the crack in the top, just so I have kind of like an extra element to the piece. And is this the size of the jar that it comes? Actually in? Actually, comes in three size diff different size bags. So you're gonna have a resealable bag. And they sell uh, retail 10, 15, and 20. So it's your market average. And like I said, you're not gonna have as much waste as you will with other products. You're gonna be able to use the entire bag, okay? So that Four is- Four ounces, eight ounces. And, and 16. And do you know when they're going on the market? March, they will ship in March. Okay, awesome. So I'm just gonna heat this until it sets. You can also use it to adhere to paper, cardstock, canvas, wood. It'll sure. adhere. Yeah, let me bring this over. This is one I'm kind of working on. Oops. I attached it to Dina Wakeley's new um, watercolor journal. Mm -hmm. And I didn't glue it. I just put the clay straight onto the album cover and then wow. heat set it onto the album cover. Also, oh, can you talk about, you said that it was really easy for people that have a hard time with clay. Yes, so I have um, hand strength issues. So I've used epoxies 
um, clays where they're two part where you have to mix them together. And they're just so hard on my hands that my husband often does it for me. This is nice and pliable. It's almost like a putty. Um, so I'm able to mold and um, sculpt it fairly easily. There it goes, it's starting to bake. And once it cures, the two pieces will be- just wanna show it. This one was made with it too. Yep. <coughs> so you can do everything up to very thin petal-like um, pieces to heavy um, mold pieces like what we just did. Fantastic. Really huge. Yes. There's nothing Solver. else out on the market like it. And it's instant gratification. If you're teaching a class or a right. workshop, if you're doing an online video series, even YouTube, and you have only a limited amount of time, this is a great product to use because you can get, you know, a sculpted piece once it's sculpted, you dry it, you can, even the larger pieces that I work on, maybe five minutes to get the whole piece done, where in the oven I'm taking 20 minutes and I'm not even sure if it's fully baked or not. This way I can actually watch it in front of me do its own job. And is it safe for the fumes and everything? Like I've been working around it for two months. I haven't had any um, issues with it. If, good ventilation. Yeah, good yeah. ventilation. Any, like anything, same with, yeah. yeah. Same with any other art medium. You want to make sure that you have good ventilation. This have a fan in front of you if you need, um, just if you're in a small area. But once it cures, there is, yeah. there's well, no more outgassing. Yeah, right. You I'm don't like, even have like a, oil the oil. smell of, you know, can you guys smell it? Yeah. <laughs> she smelled it for you. You can also put in cologne essential oil. Well, you have some on your on right. your yes. thing. Yeah, so this has and, like that, and the eye on her cheek. Right. Yes. You can make buttons, which are... Yep. Oh, the buttons. Okay, hold on. I'm they can be washed, some. dry cleaned. Oh, wow. Go through the dryer. Wow. They're very strong. So it's water resistant, yes. obviously. Yes, water okay. resistant. Um, you can Before make and after? Um, well, before, it's you want to make sure it's cured. Right. So, um, But I blend it with uh, water and paintbrush. So if I want like a textured finish on it, I'll take a paintbrush with a little bit of water and you can mold it with water. So you can put, for example, like a paste on top to create texture, like what you're saying? Like yes. If, like if it's flat, if it's something like this. Correct. Could, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's great. Well, sorry, while it's wet, you can roll it in like um, salt or oh, yeah. to get a texture. And then once you cure it, you can rinse the salt off. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Yep. You can embed it with rocks, like um, use it almost as an adhesive. Um, we've had some jewelry pieces made to make it look like metal smithing. And they, it looks oh, just like metal. Yeah. Just like metal smithing. So there's wow. a lot of different applications that you can use this clay for. Um, if you have questions, further questions, please feel free to contact Ranger, myself, um, and just, I mean, it's definitely something that I feel that uh, a lot of people, once they get their hands on it, are going to love. I so, agree. Yes, I agree. definitely um, check us out. Um, Rangers showed a few more. There's more samples in the booth if you want to take a look. Yes, I will. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank Where you. are they, these samples? Yeah, I'll show you. Just come show me this. Yes. Yeah, but I'll walk around. Yeah, because those, I think people will like to see what kind of things they can make they with can it. They can make with it, yes. So we'll go over here to the wall. We have a few shelves with samples on them. So all of these have been made with the same clay. Wow. So here are the jewelry pieces I was talking about that make it look like metal smithing. Wow. So That's they texturized it, it's that clay with a patina over the top of it. No, but that's only, the, but not the stones. The stones not the are, stones. Okay. Yeah, the stones are natural, but you can, they adhere to the stones, which is nice. Fantastic. Well, there's the three sizes. Here's the three sizes. Well, that's great. That's really, really innovative, I have you to say. You can use, I used um, Tim's Distress-Free Inkers on the bunny, and I used oh, embossing nice. powder on the tree. So you can use a wide variety of product. These were all done with Boston? acrylic paints. Yes. Wow. We have some jewelry. There's samples on the wall where they've used each of Ranger's um, mediums on top of the clay. Yeah, that's fine. So you can see kind of what different textures you can achieve. Wow, that's fantastic. These were like, oh, 
created. They pressed on them. Yeah, they pressed with a stamp or stencil. Please make your way to the exit. Wow. Thank you again for attending. We will see you all tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I guess we have to leave. <laughs> Thank you so the much. The day has come to a close. Thank you for joining us in Ranger's booth. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you, John. Amazing product. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.